Hello and welcome to Labor Market Information Council virtual discussion on improving accessibility for neurodivergent job seekers. Today's event will be hosted in English only, but a French transcript and caption recording will be made available on LMIC's website. If you'd like to turn live closed captioning for this event, click the More button in the bottom right-hand corner of your Zoom window and select Captioning. I'm Gabrielle Laho, who's Communication Specialist at LMIC. I'm joining you today from Gander, Newfoundland, the island of Karumkuk, which is the unceded traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq and the Biotuk. As a settler on this land, I would like to recognize all first people who were here before us, those whom I live alongside now, and the generations to come. Today, we're hosting a very timely discussion about improving accessibility for neurodivergent job seekers. Today's event builds on the finding in LMIC recent report, Decoding Job Posting, Improving Accessibility for Neurodivergent Job Seekers. If you haven't yet had an opportunity to read the report, my colleague Brian will put the link into the chat. Thank you, Brian. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to explain how today's session will work. We'll be kicking things off with a 25-minute discussion featuring Dr. Suzanne Spittery, research lead at LMIC and author of this report. At the end of the presentation, we encourage you to engage in an interactive session where you may ask questions regarding the discussed topic by clicking on the Q&A button in the bottom left-hand corner of your Zoom window. So with housekeeping out of the way, I'm delighted to, re to welcome our researcher. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I just want to start with a brief introduction. Um, as we all know, in our contemporary workforce, diversity, equity, and inclusion are growing considerations. And while significant progress has been made in recognizing and celebrating diversity, neurodivergence remains relatively overlooked by many corporate initiatives in research and in policy agendas compared to other diversity and inclusion related topics and identities. The Labor Market Information Council, or LMIC, is committed to fostering inclusive approaches to LMI, or labor market information, and addressing the needs of all Canadians. As part of this commitment, LMIC embarked on a research initiative to explore the impact of neurodivergence on job recruitment processes, starting with the analysis of job postings. Specifically, the study sought to understand how neurodivergent individuals interpret job postings and how these interpretations influence their decision making regarding job applications. For the purposes of this research, we adopted a definition of neurodiversity wherein neurodivergent serves as a non-medical umbrella term encompassing individuals with autism, ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, dyslexia, dyspraxia or developmental conditions or disorders, Tourette's syndrome and other neurological or developmental conditions or learning disabilities. So what do we know about neurodivergent folk and their labor market outcomes and experiences? So we know that neurodivergent adults have lower employment rates than the Canadian average. According to the 2017 Canadian Census, sorry, Canadian Survey on Disability, only one in three Canadian adults aged 20 to 64 who identified as having ASD reported being employed. It is also noteworthy that even when employed, neurodivergent adults often find themselves underemployed compared to their non-neurodivergent peers. Recent research by Deloitte Canada and Otacon Canada showed that nearly half of autistic adults who participated in their survey were working part-time or on a contract basis or in temporary positions. In contrast, in 2021, 81.6% of all employed Canadians held full-time positions with only 18.4% working part-time. We also know that neurodivergent adults hold their jobs for a shorter amount of time. In 2021, full and part-time workers across the country had an average job tenure of 8.6 years. However, among those who identified as autistic, only 2% of employed survey respondents had been in their current position for more than five years. 47% reported one or two years spent in their current role, and a further 29% reported a job tenure of three to five years. 
So I want to clarify that our usage of autism specific statistics isn't meant to serve as a proxy for all neurodivergent individuals. Rather, it's due to the scarcity of comprehensive data in this area. Unfortunately, statistics on employment rates among neurodivergent individuals are limited, and the data we do have often focuses primarily and exclusively on, sorry, on those on the autism spectrum. So why do neuro neurodivergent Canadians have different employment outcomes? According to recent research by the Conference Board of Canada and the Future Skills Centre, the unemployment and underemployment of neurodivergent Canadians might be partly due to an undervaluing of their strengths, biases against the way neurodivergent individuals may present themselves and or communicate during the interview process or within the work environment may also play a role. However, inaccessible hiring processes may also contribute to the problem. To begin our investigation on the effects of inaccessible hiring processes, we started at the very beginning, the beginning of the hiring process, which is very often the job posting, as reading a job posting often launches the recruitment process. The study aimed to understand how neurodivergent individuals interpret job postings and how these interpretations influence their decision making regarding job applications. Recognizing the importance of inclusive employment practices, we sought to investigate whether certain aspects of job postings may deter or potentially entice neurodivergent individuals from applying for positions, thus contributing to the observed disparities in employment rates. Qualitative interviews were conducted with 19 individuals who self-identified as neurodivergent. We aim to gather participants from a diverse range of identities and conditions under the umbrella of neurodiversity. Additionally, qualitative content analysis was performed on job posting data obtained from vicinity jobs, a Canadian data analytics firm specializing in near real-time monitoring of job market trends, our analysis also involved examining job postings to identify the most sought after social emotional skills. Additionally, a representative sample of Canadian job postings from diverse regions was qualitatively analyzed, uh, sorry, analyzed to delve into language requirements inclus and inclusivity related information embedded within them. So why job postings? Job postings are a crucial element of LMI. They offer valuable insights into job opportunities, requirements, and trends. Beyond that, though, job postings play a pivotal role as the primary source of information for organizational and opportunity assessments. Previous research has demonstrated that job postings are very often the first encounter individuals have with an organization. Additionally, the literature has shown that job advertisements are often worded in ways that might pose discrimination risks, leading to the inclusion, sorry, exclusion of certain groups of applicants. Job postings in the language they contain can therefore substantially affect the makeup of the applicant pool, which can lead to the exclusion of certain applicant groups who select themselves out of applying for roles. So what did we find? Uh, we found that many individuals who, who participated in this study expressed that specific aspects of job postings contributed to their reluctance to apply for certain jobs. Our qualitative research aligned with prior studies on barriers to neurodivergent individuals entering the labor market and revealed four primary categories of job posting barriers impacting their employment search to varying extents. These four barriers are the language used to describe social and emotional skills, complex application processes, ambiguity or overspecificity, and job and workplace descriptions. So the first barrier category identified was the language used to describe social emotional skills or soft skills. Social and emotional skills are those abilities that enable employees to fit in at a workplace. They include skills related to personality, traits, flexibility, motivation, goals, and preferences. Uh, 
Employers frequently identify communication, interpersonal, self-management, collaboration, and problem-solving skills as the most sought-after skills in the workplace. And our research revealed that over 90% of job postings in 2022 required at least one social and emotional skill. According to many participants in the study, and you can see some quotes highlighted, social and emotional requirements as presented in postings can be overwhelming and discouraging for some neurodivergent individuals. Some neurodivergent individuals may interpret and use language in a non-nuanced or literal way, consequently not applying for a role with a long list of requirements. Many of the individuals who participated in the study were careful to note that they do expect to see some social and emotional requirements presented in job postings. And others even noted that it is very reasonable for employers and recruiters to expect to be able to hire people with good communication and teamwork skills. Despite this, the wording of some social and emotional skills or the listing of numerous skills in a single posting was concerning for many participants. The complexity of the application process was also identified as a barrier for some neurodivergent folk. In fact, most participants reporting having difficulty understanding the details of the job application processes as described in job postings and or facing a barrier to completing one or more of, this, of the steps within the process. 42% of the job postings we analyzed included complex ap application processes that could potentially create barriers. Some participants spoke of the complex digital applications and described an online, sorry, as described in online job postings. For example, job postings that describe a process of inputting information, creating an online profile, uploading documents, and following specific formatting requirements were described by some as overwhelming. Ambiguous, confusing, or overly specific language found in postings was also regarded as a barrier by some of the participants in this study. While ambiguous job postings and overly specific job postings are at the opposite ends of the content spectrum, both can pose hurdles for neurodivergent individuals, influencing their understanding of and engagement with the application process. Numerous studies have shown that using technical language or jargon can deter many readers. Jargon is often specific to certain industries and is best understood by people already familiar with them. This can cause confusion and make, uh, make people feel excluded or less intelligent. In job postings, jar jargon might discourage many candidates from applying. As reported by several study participants, ambiguous language and jargon can hinder candidates, including those with different communication styles and cognitive processing, from fully grasping the role's expectations and deciding if they're a good fit for the position. In addition to confusing jargon, overly specific job descriptions can also deter neurodivergent individuals from applying. Unlike many neurotypical candidates who may apply if they broadly meet criteria, neurodivergent individuals sometimes interpret job postings literally and may not apply if they don't meet every criterion, even if it is listed as desired rather than required. Despite this potential risk, our analysis revealed that more than half of all Canadian job postings contain confusing jargon, are overly specific, or ambiguous. In addition to concerns about social emotional skills, complex application processes, and ambiguous or overly specific job requirements, study participants also highlighted that the way a job posting describes a workplace can significantly influ influence their interest in a role. According to some, job descriptions often include hints about the workplace and corporate culture. According to some participants, job descriptions containing words like fun, exciting, and positive indicate a company's emphasis on morale, which may be challenging for neurodivergent individuals who struggle with social interactions. Conversely, neurodivergent individuals, particularly those with ADHD, may seek out job posting that highlights a company's commitment to team morale. 
Participants observed that job postings contain a containing extensive information about an organization's commitment to diversity and inclusion were seen as genuinely invested in these issues. Moreover, many participants stressed the importance of how job postings describe work location and flexibility. Mentions of remote work options, hybrid models, or other arrangements significantly influenced the decision and preference of neurodivergent job seekers. Despite that, though, our analysis revealed that only 9% of analyzed job postings mentioned flexibility, while just 17% mentioned accommodations and 28% mentioned diversity, equity, and inclusion. In conclusion, the wording of job postings influences who applies for a position. In today's labor market, postings are often biased, leading to both intentional and intentional and unintentional discrimination. Therefore, improving the quality and accessibility of job postings is one way to reduce employment barriers for neurodivergent people. If employers commit to making job postings more accessible to, to neurodivergent candidates, we could conceivably move towards a future where neurodivergence is embraced as an integral and valued aspect of the Canadian employment landscape. This would improve employment outcomes for Canada's neurodivergent community. In, co sorry, in collaboration with Autocon Canada, we developed four recommendations for employers to improve job postings and make them more inclusive, inclusive of neurodivergent job seekers. If interested, please check them out. You can find them at the bottom of our report. Thank you. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Uh, I think we'll wrap this session by addressing some of the questions that have been submitted to us. Uh, so I'll tell you the first question we receive is, what are the next steps that we can make to help change the job posting culture? Uh, so for sure. So to promote inclusivity in job postings, you can consider working to help educate HR professionals, uh, establish inclusive policies, leverage technology for accessibility, gather feedback for improvement, and advocate for industry-wide change, and collaborate with advocacy groups or inclusive work specialists. To help develop this report, we partnered with Auticon, and I'd like to pass it over to them for a few moments, for a few moments sorry, to discuss um, what they do and what they offer. I think we're having a little bit of dip technical difficulties. We're so sorry about that. Um, we'll try and circle back to this first question. We'll follow up with the second one. Okay. Uh, so the second one is how can employers ensure they are accessible to neurodivergent employees who are also disabled and not just prioritizing candidates who are neurodivergent, but not disabled? Okay, perfect. So two ensure accessibility for neurodivergent employees who are also disabled or living with a disability requires employers to adopt inclusive practices that prioritize both neurodiversity and disability inclusion. Um, so to achieve this, employers can provide accommodation that can include offering reasonable accommodations tailored to the specific, specific needs of neurodivergent individuals with disabilities, such as flexible work arrangements, assistive technologies, sensory friendly workspaces or communication supports, promote awareness and training, um, including conducting training programs to raise awareness among employees and managers about neurodiversity and disability inclusion in the workplace. Um, this includes understanding different neurodivergent conditions, recognizing individual strengths and fostering an inclusive work em environment um, adaptive recruitment and or onboarding processes. Um, you can work to ensure that recruitment and onboarding uh, is accessible and accommodating to neurodivergent individuals with disabilities. This may involve providing alternative formats for application materials, offering additional support during interviews, and facilitating a smooth transition into the workplace. We can create supportive policies and practices. Um, that support neurodivergent employees with disabilities, such as flexible leave options, 
reasonable adjustments for job tasks, and opportunities for career development and advancement. And I think very importantly, work to create a inclusive culture. So cultivating a workplace culture that values diversity, promotes open communication and celebrates the contributions of all employees, including those who are neurodivergent and living with disabilities. Um, we can work to encourage collaboration, empathy and mutual respect among team members. Thank you so much for that. The next one will be, would you have any example of jargon? Um, so that's a great question. So in our analysis, more than half of all Canadian job postings contain confusing jargon, which is often industry specific language. So I've pulled out some um, common examples that are not industry specific. So we've got team player, dynamic, self-starter, empower, proactive, leverage, window of opportunity, best practices, paradigm shift, proven track record, core competency, and streamline. So when you get rid of jargon in favor of plain language, you can make your company feel more accessible and engaging to potential candidates. So avoiding avoiding these types of words and, and many others, depending on the industry. Perfect. And one more, how can we reduce bias and stigma surrounding the disclosure of invisible disabilities during the interview process to ensure that individuals who think differently feel comfortable revealing their capabilities to employers? So globally, around 1 billion people live with a disability. To put that in perspective, that's one person out of every seven. And while some disabilities are visible, others are not obvious to onlookers, and that's what is often termed invisible. So research at coming out of the United States shows that 88% of employees with invisible disabilities choose not to disclose it at work to avoid stigma and potential discrimination. But there are some practices that can be utilized to create a more inclusive workplace. Um, so you can highlight accommodations and support. So include information in job postings about the accommodations and support available for anyone who needs it. This sends a clear message to candidates that the organization values diversity and is committed to creating an inclusive work environment. Um, emphasize skills and experience. So shift the focus of job postings away from specific traits or characteristics and instead highlight the skills, experience, and qualifications required for the role. Provide education and training. Offer education for hiring managers and recruiters on neurodiversity, on disabilities and invisible disabilities, and the importance of inclusive hiring practices. This helps to raise awareness and reduce unconscious bias in the recruitment process. Um, encourage self-identification. Create a supportive environment where candidates feel comfortable self-identifying self-identifying as neurodivergent or as having a invisible disability if they choose to do so. So you can assure that candidates that disclose will not impact their can candidacy and that accommodations are available if needed. And lead by example. So you demonstrate a commitment to diversity and inclusion in the workplace through organizational policies, practices, and culture. Showcase success stories of neurodivergent employees, those living with disabilities, and their contributions to the organization to challenge stereotypes and misconceptions. By implementing these strategies, employees can help to lower bias and stigma surrounding the non-disclosure of invisible disabilities in the interview process or in the work environment, uh, creating a more inclusive and supportive environment for everybody. Thank you so much, Suzanne. I believe we still have some time to answer a few more questions. So we have Michelle that asks, do you know any AI tool able to support recruiters and making the posting more inclusive? Um, so I'd like to point out that this is definitely something that Auticon uh, helped us with. So um, if we go back to their pre that previous slide that had the Auticon information, um, you could definitely reach out to Auticon. This is something that they specialize in. However, yes, you can look up um, tons of ways to make job postings more inclusive and even chat GPT can help with that. Um, 
depending on who you were trying to attract to job postings, um, there are particular prompts that can help you with that. Um, but if this is your first time, I would definitely recommend partnering with an organization, taking our recommendations and, and making an attempt to just increase the hiring pool. Thank you so much for that. We have another one. On our last slide, you mentioned a limited number of job posting site flexibility and the posting. Were there any trends that you observe in terms of the types, industry, size, location of employer that were likely to be flexible? Yes. Um, so I want to point out that that is not something specific the analysis point, um, sorry, looked at. However, yes, there were some very clear um, trends that emerged, um, the higher the education and the higher paying the job, the more likely it was that there were mentions of flexibility. So typical white collar, high educated, um, or required a high degree of education, as well as a high salary was most like, more likely, sorry, to have some sort of flexibility um, language embedded in a job posting. And that goes for um, remote and hybrid as well. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I believe we still have a little bit of time. Um, so we have another question that says, what are some ways to improve instruction to employers? What are accommodation or how to create processes? Is there an organization that is doing this? A yes. Oh, so sorry. sorry. So sorry. <laughs> the point is often that employers believe it is costly and will affect the bottom line to do this. Are there strategies that can help as an HR person to highlight the benefits to employers in their language? Yes. Um, yes, there's there's tons of information available online and through organizations. Again, um, we chose specifically to work with Autocon, but there are other organizations. One of the most significant myths when it comes to hiring neurodivergent folk or those living with um, disabilities is that it comes with a significant cost. Um, and this is a myth that is just simply not true. For example, there is a understanding that these some groups of people would require accommodations that are very costly. However, one of the biggest accommodations, one of the most common, sorry, accommodations asked for is flexibility in working times. Um, so perhaps not full full length shifts. Um, this is not costly at all, and yet it is the number one most requested accommodation. Um, for both neurodivergent folk and those living with a disability. Um, there's also a perception that hiring individuals living with disabilities or neurodivergent folk would negatively impact team morale for the um, existing team. Again, this is a myth. This is not true. Um, employers who proactively illustrate their commitment to diversity um, by promoting inclusive hiring practices. It has the opposite effect of on morale. People feel more comfortable. Um, people feel more empathy. And people are more likely to disclose their own um, their own disabilities if they happen to be living with disabilities. Um, but it is it is also a myth. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll go for one last question. Can you describe what you mean by an invisible disability? Does that include neurodivergent people? How are they different? Yes, so for sure. So yes, sometimes an invisible disability could be um, neurodivergent folk. It could also be somebody who's just living with a physical disability that you cannot see. So you can sometimes see a person living with a physical disability um, very easily. For example, if somebody utilizes a wheelchair, um, we can clearly see that quite easily. However, if somebody suffers from like chronic back pain and they don't use a wheelchair, but they may require accommodation or support, we can't necessarily look at a person and see that. So that sometimes is what is an invisible disability. However, you can also have an invisible disability if you suffer from um, a mental health problem or 
well, just say depression, for example. So if you suffer from depression, that could be an invisible disability. So um, other mental health conditions as well. So some neurodivergent folk also consider themselves or are considered to be living with a disability. Um, so if you are living with um, a degree of autism that impacts your day-to-day -day functioning or um, OCD, for example, that impacts the way that you are able to function on in your day-to-day, -day, that could be considered an invisible disability. Um, so that's what that refers to. But I think I've over explain that part and miss the second part of the question. If you could just repeat that, Gabrielle. Of course, there's no worries. Um, so does that include neurodivergent people and how are they different? Yeah, so neurodivergent is an umbrella term. So it is a non-medical umbrella term, but it includes a number of quote unquote conditions. So anybody um, who is on the autism spectrum, anybody with ADHD, um, and there are another uh, uh, group of other conditions, Tourette syndrome um, example, that are considered neurodivergent. Um, in terms of how are they different, um, do we mean neurodivergent versus invisible disability? Because um, sometimes they do go hand in hand. Sometimes you can be neurodivergent and suffer from an in, I'm sorry, an invisible disability. Um, and sometimes you can just be neurodivergent and not be have your day to day life impacted in any way. Um, it's just about the way that we think and process information, and often about how we communicate. Thank you so much for this, Suzanne. This concludes our discussion. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and on behalf of LMIC, thank you again and have a lovely afternoon wherever you are joining us from.